Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we're going to talk about a fascinating topic, how to find and use and understand the assemblage point. We have briefly talked about the assemblage point in a previous episode on Carlos Castaneda and we talked about it in reference to the plat or plate. The assemblage point is an energy center located between the shoulder blades, around the back, sort of outside of the body, that plays a fundamental role in creating our reality. This sort of begins for me personally and when I learned about the, the plate or plat. The assemblage point was discussed by Carlos Castaneda, but I really had not understood it as much. So the first point that Vadim Zeeland, who wrote Reality Transurfing, refers to the assemblage point in the book Reality Transurfing, where he says a model of human perception is well described in the books of Carlos Castaneda and Theun Mares. Their model reflects the ideas of the Toltec, the last people to originate from Atlantis. According to their teachings, the human being is surrounded by a shining cocoon of energy, consisting of numerous threads. Somewhere in the area of the shoulder blades, the threads join in a single focus called an assemblage point. The position of the assemblage point determines the nature of your perception. If you combine the Toltec model with the concept of transurfing, you could say that when the assemblage points are in the customary position, a person perceives physical reality in its usual form. In this position, physical reality coincides with the corresponding sector of the alternative space. If the point shifts to one side, the synchronicity is disturbed and a person is capable of perceiving unrealized areas of the field. In most people, the position of the points is firmly fixed. However, when for various reasons the focus is disturbed and the points start to wander, a person develops clairvoyant skills. Naturally, our dreams are determined by shifts in the assemblage points. It is important that the focus of our perception not only shift to one side, but also return to its former position. Otherwise, if it gets stuck in an unnatural position, the mind undergoes changes that are ordinarily referred to as insanity. People who are capable of intentionally shifting their assemblage point can shape reality and are lucid dreamers. This ability appears of itself if you return to the point of reference relative to reality, i.e. if you are conscious of how you really are. This is not an easy task. You can count the number of people who have been known to reach enlightenment on the fingers of one hand. Reaching enlightenment is like being in a strange city, desperately wandering along narrow winding streets and then soaring high up into the sky where you suddenly have a bird's eye view of everything below you. Like aligned on the palm of your hand, the path to your goal becomes instantly obvious. So we get this reference, and it's very enticing because Zeeland then expands on it in his book Tufti the Priestess. But he is referring to Theun Maris. Theun Maris, who also talks about Toltec teachings, does an amazing job in his book Return of the Warriors, the Toltec teachings. Maris describes what he calls the nine precepts of perception in explaining the assemblage point. First of all, the universe consists of an infinite number of energy fields resembling threads of light. Secondly, these thread-like energy fields radiate from a source of unimaginable dimensions, metaphorically called the eagle. As such, these energy fields are known as the eagle's emanations. And three, human beings are likewise composed of the same infinite number of these thread-like energy fields, which manifest in the shape of a large luminous egg. The height of this egg is equal to the length of a man's body with his arms fully extended above his head on the vertical axis, and its width is that of a man with his arms extended outwards from the center of the body along the horizontal axis. This egg is known as the cocoon of man. And fourth, only a small group of the energy fields inside the cocoon are lit up at any one time by a brilliant point of light located on the surface of this cocoon of energy. Fifth, perception takes place 
when the energy fields which are illuminated by the point of light extend their light to illuminate corresponding energy fields outside the cocoon this point of light is termed the point where perception is assembled normally abbreviated to the assemblage point six it is possible to shift the assemblage point to any other position on the surface of the cocoon or even into its interior because of the assemblage point illuminates any energy fields with which it comes into contact the new energy fields it illuminates as a result of such a shifting constitutes therefore a new perception it is this new level of perception that is known as seeing seventh when the assemblage point shifts sufficiently for a totally new world is perceived which is as real as the one man normally perceives eighth there is a mysterious force known as intent which exists throughout the entire universe it is this force which brings about perception for it is intent which firstly aligns the energy field and then secondly causes awareness of that alignment ninth the goal of what maris calls warriors is to experience all possible perceptions available to man this constitute what is known as total awareness in the order to see the old seers had to use hallucinogens to move their assemblage points but the new seers realized this was impractical as the rituals of the old seers more than anything else practical ways of moving the assemblage point were now needed and in order to find these new seers began by studying the assemblage points through seeing even though at the outset they still had to make use of drugs this research turned out to be most worthwhile for not only did they find the necessary techniques to enable them to move the assemblage point but also uncovered the mysteries of willpower these new seers he called them had discovered that will is the force that makes us behave in the ways we do when we perceive it is therefore this force that determines our perception of the world thus it is will which fixes the assemblage point at the exact spot where it is located here it is important to realize that although there is a definite area within which the assemblage point can always be found the exact position is brought about by habitual actions and repetition habits obviously vary between one individual and the next and consequently no two people will have the assemblage points fixed in exactly the same spot the assemblage point of man is generally found on the surface of the cocoon roughly opposite of the point between the shoulder blades in the development of the normal child the child first learns where it seems most suitable to place the assemblage point and then fixes it there through repetition and this repetition is at first mostly dictated by encouragements from elders and later by habitual internal dialogue by far the most important aspect of toltec knowledge is that once the internal dialogue has been stopped the assemblage point is free to move this enables man to experience altered states of perception quite spontaneously and is the magical key the old seers had searched for so ardently had they but realized that the only real value of their rituals lay in their ability to shift the assemblage point the old seers would have discovered this key as well as the secret of will or power in order to move the assemblage point the new seers maris calls them define three principal techniques based on the nine truths of awareness the first technique is termed the art of stalking the second is the art of dreaming and the third is the mastery of intent from these three techniques evolve three distinct areas of activity in which every apprentice must become totally proficient if he is to succeed in becoming a toltec now this gives us a background and i certainly recommend that you read the carlos castaneda books because he asks don juan a number of questions and there's a further understanding of assemblage points zeeland develops this idea even further in a channeled work tufti the priestess where he is receiving channeled messages from tufti the priestess and they describe something called the intention plat Tufti explains in the book every single one of you has an intention plat it is an energy plexus similar to an ordinary plat or plate p l a i t you can't see it but you can feel it like a phantom limb which is used to be there but it is not anymore rather than hanging straight down it sticks out at an angle to the spine it's a really funny kind of plat the outer intention center is at the tip of the plat it is a spot between the shoulders only not flat to the spine but a little away from it 
you will find the precise spot intuitively. The exact distance is of no significance. It is enough to focus your attention on it, and you will feel where it is. The principle of the outer center is very simple. You transfer your attention to the end of the plate or plat and imagine the picture of any event you would like to attract into your life. This illuminates the future frame, and what you visualize becomes manifest in physical reality. Zeeland goes on to explain that you can activate the plat when sort of in a neutral observer mode, explaining the plate works like a film projector. You can turn your little eye wants and if onlys on the inner screen as much as you like, but it won't be very effective, practically a misfire. The projector runs at full capacity in the moment that your thoughts, words, and images originate from the outer intention center. So if you want to do more than just wallow in your own thoughts, if you want to influence how your reality is shaped, you turn on this plat. Later in the book, Zeeland describes what he calls the plat and flow method. First of all, take an in-breath. And on the out breath, imagine the arrow, an arrow moving at an angle away from your back. This activates the plat using this arrow visualization without letting go of the sensation of the plat, compose a picture of your reality at the same time, make sure that you're breathing freely. Then without losing the sense of the plat or the arrow, you take an in breath and on the out breath, you sharply send the arrow into a vertical downward position, triggering both energy flows Staying aware of the movement of the rising and descending energy flows, you say the thought form quietly to yourself, my intention is being realized, and then you let go of the sensations. In particular, I found this interesting to refer to because he is trying to control the angle of the plat, which we later learn is important, the angle of the plat and the energies that are coming in. You can try out my plat activation meditation and also... I have about an hour-long episode called Advanced Plat Technique Training, where I sort of discuss what Zeeland further discussed in other books when answering questions on Instagram and other places where people asked him questions about how to use the plat. So I've been using this for several years now since this book came out, and I've expanded my own experience as I explain in the Advanced Plat Technique Training I started being able to connect it to trees if I stood behind a tree or by fire. Different elements that were behind my back will have different effects. I started experimenting on this in the bathtub in water, which he also describes. And it is a real thing. I've asked friends of mine, do you think that he created this? But really, there is a new researcher that's been discussing the assemblage point even further that really brings this into the scientific fold. I know that many of you may have already turned off this episode thinking, oh, this is just another episode like chakras or woo-woo that doesn't make sense. But I promise you there is a science behind the assemblage point. The goal of my podcast is to teach different ways of creating realities. And this is one of the most effective methods. Your reality is obviously bringing a frame into your mind and it works in this manner. Your reality is tied to an assemblage point that is behind you. And a good way of thinking of this is that you're really not in one reality. We understand string theory in physics and you are connected like a string to many different past events, ideas and beliefs, things that you give your energy to. And they all tie like threads to the back of your body in an energetic field. All of those things kind of tie up in one area that define your particular reality tunnel that you're in right now. And if you want to shift it, you need to shift the location of this assemblage point to the place where the reality that you want exists. It can be a very slight or subtle shift, but I found some further research and I recommend two books in particular, Naked Spirit by John Whale, J-O-N-W-H-A-L-E, and a book called Catalyst of Power, The Assemblage Point of Man. So, first of all, in the Catalyst of Power, there's a lot of discussion behind the scientific background on the assemblage point. It's really well written, really well explained, and explains the missing link, the the assemblage point of man. It is a scientific fact, he says, that energy systems are assembled from an epicenter. We can see that galaxies and stars, planets, molecules, and atoms are all 
energy systems which oscillate by virtue of the fact that they are oscillating. They have a center of rotation. Other types of oscillating energy systems such as electricity, generating stations, radio and receiving transmission stations, or mobile telephones also have an epicenter. Gravity and magnetism are examples of force and energy fields upon which our lives depend. Yet the eye cannot see them. These energy fields radiate from a spinning central point called the epicenter. For example, the Earth's magnetic field extends into space where it protects the Earth's atmosphere from being blown away by solar storms. If we could see it from above, it would look like a massive donut. And like a donut, it has a hole at the north and south poles. The axis of its epicenter passes through the hole. Its location in space is on three axes, X, Y, Z. The x-axis is across the equator to the center of the Earth, and the y-axis is across the magnetic north and south poles, while the z-axis is at 90 degrees to the x-axis. The crux, or the cross point of the magnetic field, is in the center of the Earth at the magnetic center. Radio waves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays are all invisible waves that make up the frequency spectrum. Their origins can all be traced back to the epicenter. The human eye is sensitive to a narrow band of frequencies called light and can only see a minute percentage of the frequency spectrum which radiates from our sun. From this perspective, we are all ignorant of what is actually going on in the unseen universe around us. When white light strikes an object, the surface of the object vibrates at a specific frequency which is equivalent to the color seen. For example, the color of the light reflected by the metal gold is predominantly yellow. Therefore, gold's natural vibration wavelength is 590 nanometers or around 612 billion cycles per second. The narrow band of frequencies of white light is made up of millions of different frequencies and each individual frequency represents a different color or tone. Wilk goes on to discuss that over a hundred years ago, science demonstrated that surrounding every atom is a cloud of electrons. This fact proves that everything in the material universe, including the human body, consists of electrical energy. The human body is a complex electrical energy system, and over a century later, this scientific fact has largely been ignored by medical science. Therefore, it is not surprising that medical science has yet to discover the epicenter of the human energy system. The flow of electricity in the human body controls and affects this rhythmic exchange of electrons. Emotional traumas, drugs, and infections, for example, can completely disrupt the body's natural rhythms and levels of electrons exchange. We literally experience an emotional electric shock. Surrounding and permeating every cell of a living person is a vibrating energy field. It is an egg-shaped pressure field which contains and characterizes our individual consciousness and state of being from that of others in the universe at large. In other words, we are all individual energy systems that can, to a large extent, move around and function independently under the direction of our will. Our physical body is encapsulated in an oscillating energy f field which has a boundary. The characteristics of each person's physical and psychological makeup will be reflected in the frequency and extent of their energy field. Other descriptions for this field are the human aura or the body's quantum and energy field. Some scientists call it the unified field. Every living person has an oscillating energy field and scientifically and in reality all of us have an energy epicenter. The human energy field epicenter is a very bright spot of high energy which the trained person can feel or see. The vortex or epicenter of the human energy system is called the assemblage point of man. It is called the assemblage point because we are assembled in the womb from the umbilical cord that connects us to the placenta of our mother, the major input of our energy centers, the developing fetus via the navel. At the time of birth, the assemblage point is positioned at the navel area. However, the assemblage point location for the physically and mentally healthy adult is close to the thymus gland in the center of the chest. In someone who is suffering from mental or physical symptoms or disease, the assemblage point will be found in a different location. As we approach our time of death, our assemblage point moves down towards the navel. This knowledge has profound implications for world health and advancement of current medical models. The assemblage point is concentrated as a vortex of energy in the quantum and atomic energy body. There are three category types of assemblage point shifts, and these are one, a movement or change in angle, 
two, a shift or change in angle and location, or three, a shift in depth or change in angle, location, and size. The assemblage point that dictates how we behave, feel, and perceive the world. Its location influences our conscious reality and greatly affects physical and mental health. Every one of us has an assemblage point. It is very easy to locate. The procedure for locating and correcting it is quick, simple, and painless. Manipulation of the location of the assemblage point can change our state of consciousness, increase our biological energy levels, and improve general health, according to Whale. Familiarity with its location and performing regular adjustments to it can accelerate personal development and improve mental, physical efficiency. Correct alignment of the energy body with the physical body are vital for our physical and mental well-being. So imagine a sort of toroidal shape if you look up a toroid like a, like the figure eight, but it all kind of comes in around the heart and then extending out behind the back. The interesting implication from Whale's research is that the point between our shoulders is not just connected to the head, but it's powered by the heart. The heart is playing a role. The energy center in the front is playing a role in the location of the assemblage point in the back. Very much like reality transurfing discusses the alignment of mind and heart, this is where the mind and heart are aligned. This is a place where the transformation of the heart's energy moves to the head's energy, and it's a place that we need to be aware of so that we can change it. Whale has a number of case studies that are super fascinating, and there's a lot of information that we can get. He's able to, with uh, devices, look at the infrared spectrum and also the temperature spectrum and actually locate an assemblage point. I believe that medical science needs to go back and look at this. This is not going to be studied by medical scientists because there is not an adequate research of the energy body being done by legitimate medical institutions today. It's always people on the other end. And a lot of times this scientific inquiry is looked down upon. But I promise you, if you're out there wanting to study this, you need to study it contact John Whale and he'll help you to understand its role. Whale explains how to locate and experience the assemblage point. Every so often a beneficial discovery or invention comes along which changes the course of fortunes and history. Discovering and proving that every human has an energy body together with an assemblage point is a major breakthrough. The ability to change how we feel and how we behave by adjusting or correcting our energy body alignment is nothing short of miraculous. The numerous limitations and hardships imposed by detrimental assemblage point locations either on oneself or on others becomes untenable. Knowledge of and familiarity with the assemblage point are the catalyst to personal power and freedom. The action of consciously shifting the assemblage point is a catalyst for changing our state of consciousness. Not only can the techniques be used for health reasons, regular periodic shifts in the assemblage point will precipitate accelerated personal development and self-control in all aspects of living. Locating and experiencing our assemblage point provides us with personal proof that we all have an energy body as well as a physical body. Working with the energy body is not a trivial affair. Assemblage point in particular is very personal matter. Here is a case study that he gives. Mrs. D.B., university lecturer, retired November 1995. This lady reported, I asked John about spiritual matters, especially reincarnation. Handing me two powerful therapeutic magnets, he said, the eye cannot see magnetic waves, but we can experience their effects. Then he instructed me to place one magnet in each hand and to bring my hand slowly together. Suddenly the magnet in my left hand jumped out across several inches to crash against the second magnet in my right hand. The magnetic power was too strong. For me to physically control. He then said, enveloping every person is a strong energy field that is visible only under special circumstances. He emphasized that just as I had experienced the power of magnets, I could at any time experience the power of the human energy field. As a practicing Christian, I felt great doubt, but also curiosity and took up his challenge. Following instructions, I brought my hands towards his chest and upper back, and as my right hand came within 12 inches of his chest, a power took over and I could not control my arms. I felt strong tingling sensations pass up my right arm and across my chest, connecting to my left hand at his back. My hands automatically came in and touched the center of his chest and back. I admitted I was frightened. Something beyond me, I felt a field of energy. 
took control of my arms and hands. Over the next two weeks, I became very aware of my own assemblage point location. I was aware of a curved energy line entering my upper right chest through to my shoulder blade. This energy line seemed connected to a kindred spirit out there. The next time I saw John, I asked him if he would confirm my location. He told me the precise location and angle of entry, then came over to me and touched the exact spot. Becoming aware of my own assemblage point has confirmed my belief that we all have a spirit energy outside or above the physical body that dies. My discovery complements my Christian faith. The assemblage point is not part of the physical body. It is an integral component of the energy body which surrounds the physical body. It manifests insofar as it is possible to define as a large indentation of energy lines which pierced the physical body. Its entry position is fixed or stationary on most people. The average diameter of the bundle of energy lines is one centimeter. These appear to cause an indentation in the energy field which passes through the chest, into the body, and out through the back. There is a definite energy potential both along the length of the lines and across their diameter. This energy potential can be easily discerned by examination using the hands or by a trained eye. Where the bundle of lines enters the physical body, they induce a tender or very sensitive area of skin of the same diameter. The tenderness can be quite uncomfortable and can often penetrate through to the shoulder blade if the spot is touched with the finger and light pressure is applied. The location of a woman's assemblage point is generally, but not always, several centimeters higher than that of a man, according to Whale. Broadly speaking, a woman's vibrational rate, her behavior, the way she feels, and her view of the world are quite different to a man's. Therefore, women and male locations tend to be different. Finding the precise location and entry angle of the average healthy, balanced person is very quick and simple. Patients with a bright and energetic disposition, a high vibrational will, have a high location and elevated entry angle. Depressed and lethargic patients, such as those suffering from ME or postnatal depression will have a low location and descending entry angle. Finding the location and entry angle for patients with mental or physical health problems can be difficult in the beginning, but gets easier as one gains experience. Often their symptoms, posture, and tone of voice will suggest where to look. The off-center map gives us a general overview of locations for specific physical and psychological symptoms. If you get the book, Whale has produced a diagram that shows the average location of the assemblage point and then shows by the angle that it's coming in and out if you may be suffering from delusions or schizophrenia or imbalance or depression by the angle of the assemblage point. One technique to find it using two people, one, the subject or patient should stand upright looking straight ahead at the horizon. The investigator should stand facing the patient's right hand body side. Secondly, form your left hand in a cup shape. Use it to feel for the sausage shaped end of the subject or patient's assemblage point in the area of the shoulder blades. Form the fingers and thumb of your right hand into a tight concentrated point. Use the tips of the bunched fingers to feel for the bundle of energy lines entering or exiting the subject. Hold both of your arms wide apart Hold your left hand behind the subject and your right hand in front, standing relaxed. Be keenly aware of your physical feelings and your weight on the floor. It helps to close your eyes or look away. Slowly bring your hands towards the subject, feeling for the maximum energy. Allow the patient's energy to control your arm muscles. It helps to keep your left hand very close but not touching the subject's back. Seek for the assemblage point energy by slowly moving both hands around in a circular motion as you bring them closer to the subject. The difference in energy potential along the bundle of lines of the assemblage point makes it easy to distinguish. When your cupped hand and pointed fingers are lined up with the subject or patient's bundle of energy lines, you will experience an energy surge. This will pass through your arms and chest. Sensitive patients will also feel the surge. You should feel like a mild electrical current is flowing in your fingers and along your arms. You may hear internally a faint hissing sound as you come onto the subject's assemblage point. Bring your hands together, feeling for maximum power and connection with the patient. Allow your hands to touch the patient's back and chest at the points of maximum energy connection. Move your right hand fingers back and forth across the patient or subject's assemblage point. 
as you move your right hand fingers back and forth across, you will clearly be able to distinguish the energy pressure changes as you go across it each time. Sensitive patients will feel a pulling sensation deep inside the chest as you move back and forth across it. I have found this is very effective and they also recommend if you're only doing it by yourself, you can try to use your hands in the front and back or just the front and swirling your hands, you start to feel the energy point. There are other ways that Whale describes that you can use such as muscle testing. You can use biofeedback machines. In particular, locating your own assemblage point, provided that you're in good health and given a little time, it is easy to locate on your own. Using the tip of your index finger of your left hand, you press firmly into the tissue of your right side of your chest in the average location of the male and females. Remove your finger and press firmly again in a very close adjacent spot. Repeat this until you have covered a diameter of 10 centimeters. When you find your location, it will be very tender, even sore or painful. With most individual, the sensation will pass deep into the chest, perhaps through the back. When you've located your assemblage point using this above strategy, then you can apply pressure on the tender point and change the angle of your finger to estimate front entry and rear entry. Here it is better to use the straightened index or second finger of your right hand when you perceive your entry angle correctly. Then you may feel the energy line passing through the chest to a point on your back. There are a variety of ways that you can adjust your assemblage point. The first being intention, as indicated by Castaneda and also by Zealand, referring to this as an intention plat. With your intention and visualization, you can change it. The other interesting system that is described by Carlos Castaneda is a system of exercises called tensegrity, as documented in his book Magical Passes. If you do a search for Magical Passes, Carlos Castaneda, there is a video, it's about an hour and 11 minutes long, that has a set of exercises that are really interesting. When I first tried it, I, I was not into it. But if you imagine yourself inside an invisible egg of energy, what those exercises are doing is awakening energy that may be dormant in your feet and other places and sort of collectively getting the energy moving in your energy shell or cocoon and then shifting your assemblage point with a number of exercises and bodily movements. You can adjust it this way and I recommend trying it. At a minimum, you'll feel... Uh, increase in energy very much like a qigong exercise the plat activation technique is very good imagining an arrow coming through the body at an angle that you want when you're manifesting you simply visualize and feel for the tip of this energy center and then you can adjust it many shamans were very good at adjusting the assemblage point on their own with their hands when doing these exercises I believe you can adjust your assemblage point through natural means such as acupuncture when doing certain acupuncture. In fact, the next time I go to my acupuncturist, I want to discuss that meridian on the back and if they're aware of it. There is a place near your back that's super sensitive connected to the front of your body, a sort of exchange point of energy that is coming in, understanding Castaneda and the Toltec idea of energy is that you already have all your energy. You don't lose it. It's in an egg and all the energy is already there. You're just awakening energy that you already have. And there's this one tiny little place on your egg that you're walking around in because you're inside of an egg, which means someday we're going to crack out of this egg and move on to something else. But inside of this egg, there's this one little point where the energy is coming in that affects our reality in a small and substantial way at first and then more significantly as we begin to control it. Now, Whale also discusses in his book, Naked Spirit, he talks about healing and realigning the assemblage point with a variety of really fascinating means, including crystals, saying that the average healthy person's assemblage point enters just inside the right side of the chest and exits near the right shoulder blade in the center of the back. Then emphasizing by using the energy that's polarized in quartz crystals, by pointing it in the same area, you can realign the angle of these energies, heal it. He studies this 
by studying the piezoelectricity that relates to electrical charges in crystals and actually is able to document some of the effects of sliding and healing the assemblage point in this process. Whale explains the natural polarizing properties of quartz are ideally suited for assemblage point manipulation. For consistent results observed, the following minimum standards for the crystal. The crystal should weigh 200 grams or more, have a length of at least 18 centimeters and a diameter of 3 centimeters or more. The crystal must have a ground and polished domed end. It should be as clear as possible and must have a well-defined point. The point should have at least three perfect triangles among its six facets and it must be energetic and dynamic to check this hold the crystal with your right hand and direct the point at the palm of your left hand you should feel a breeze of cool tingling energy penetrating the skin of your left hand where the crystal is pointing this is the technique whale describes using the quartz crystal first of all find the subject's assemblage point location and entry angle by using the instructions we discussed previously, figuring out where it enters in the front and back. Mark the locations on the chest and back with a marking pen or small self-adhesive labels. Instruct the subject to stand upright, looking straight ahead, and stand facing the left-hand side of the subject's body, holding the quartz crystal in your left hand. Place the polished domed end on the precise location of the subject's assemblage point where it enters the chest. Then use the palm of your right hand to cover and slide the rear location around the shoulder blade area and then fifth instruct your subject to take three deep breaths slowly in through the nose and out through the mouth make sure that they are really deep if not get them to take three or more as many as that are necessary to achieve full expansion of their lungs and chest cavity between each inhalation and exhalation the subject should pause for one second to allow biological energy to accumulate inside their chest and torso inhale to the count of seven pause one count exhale to the count of seven pause for one count inhale to the count of seven and so on for three full deep breath cycles on the third breath when the chest is expanded and the lungs are full with air instruct your subject to hold their breath in next instruct them to contract their sphincter and other muscles in the anus and genital area and keep them contracted then at the same time instruct them to half swallow and close the throat this effectively closes the upper and lower exit and entry gateways to the body. With the retained breath and closed gateways, energy pressure builds up and loosens the subject's energy field from his physical body. This situation will allow you to slide the assemblage point to the central location using a quartz crystal. Most subjects can hold their breath for 5 or 10 seconds and this is sufficient time. Using the quartz crystal, slide your subject's assemblage point to the center of the chest simultaneously use the palm of your right hand to drag the rear location into the center between the shoulder blades twist this crystal half a turn and remove it from his chest simultaneously tap the back lightly on the top of his head with the palm of your right hand then tell them to breathe normally so the point of this is you want the angle to be coming straight through instead of up or down the sort of adjustments that are happening with the plat that are taking you into other realities are much more minute and are done mentally. But when there's big shifts in the assemblage point, meaning that they move outside of the center axis in your body, that's when you get neuroses or depression or other health ailments that can occur. So the key point of correcting the assemblage point here is just to keep you in the groove healthily and then you can refine your ability to adjust the intention point at the end of the assemblage point for meditation purposes or reality creation exercises. This is a basic introduction to the new science of the assemblage point. There is so much more information and this is just an essential introduction to not only Whale but to the teachings of Theun Marnes, Carlos Castaneda, and Vadim Zeeland the creator of reality transurfing. There's so much more, and it's interesting. The more you look into this, the more verification you will find. It is a growing topic in pseudoscientific circles, and I'm hoping that it becomes more mainstream because I do believe that many of the problems that we have on a health level may be related to the assemblage point. And we're being pulled into realities and the assemblage point is looser within the fourth density world. And it's a skill that we need to learn. 
we need to understand how to see our energy body how the energy body works and how to manipulate it so that we can coexist in a more complicated and powerful world there's a whole lot more that i could have covered here but i just wanted to give the basics so just take a moment right now that we've discussed this let's do a short little exercise to adjust your assemblage point close your eyes take a deep breath through your nose Begin to become aware of the energy at your heart, in your heart, and around your heart. Feel the energies running from your heart to your back. Start to feel back between your shoulder blades and feel a tingling. You might feel an energy cord that connects to your head or not. Many people don't. Imagine that a flow of energy is rising up along the central axis of your body. Take an in-breath. And observe a certain sensation rising from your feet up to your head. Next, imagine the reverse flow from the top down. Exhale and track the downward sensation. Practice this a couple times. On the in-breath, the flow rises upwards. And on the out-breath, the flow moves downwards. The sensation may be phantom-like, but the energy flow is absolutely real. It's just that until you really practice, you may not be aware of it. Now imagine that two arrows protrude from your chest in opposite directions. From the chest, outwards, and from between the shoulders, and backwards. Take an in-breath, and then on the out-breath, imagine that the arrow in front is turning into an upward vertical position, and the arrow behind you is turning in a vertical position pointing downwards try to sense both energy currents as they flow simultaneously the rising current triggered by the frontal arrow moves along the whole body just a little forward of the central axis while the descending current triggered by the arrow behind the back also flows along the length of the whole body slightly beyond the axis or simply imagine that they both move simultaneously one upwards and the other downwards without any specific positioning depending on which is easiest for you to feel definitely repeat this exercise several times so that you really start to feel the energy flowing in your body now take an in-breath and on the out-breath imagine an arrow moving at an angle away from your back now the plat is activated Without letting go of the sensation of the plat, compose a picture of your reality. At the same time, make sure that you are breathing freely. Without losing the sense of the plat, the arrow, take an in-breath, and on the out-breath, sharply send the arrow into a vertical downward position triggering both energy flows. Staying aware of the movement of the rising and descending energy flows, say the following thought form with me. My intention is being realized. And let go of all sensations, dropping this off into the assemblage point. And in many cases, your assemblage point will adjust. You can try this exercise or try the plat meditation to spend a little more time with this exercise but i would go around becoming aware of it what will happen as you become aware of this assemblage point you'll start to become aware of it tingling at certain times you might be praying or having something mystical happened when it does know that your assemblage point is loose and ready for action and you can adjust your assemblage point with intention in those moments so if you suddenly start to feel something tingling behind your shoulders take advantage of that Use that in those moments to manifest the thing that you want to load up the new reality of your desire. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.